And I'm a big believer that failure doesn't exist. That's, that's an excuse we tell ourselves. And it leads to fear that makes us stop. There's no failure. There's results you want to get, results you don't want to get. The results you don't want to get should teach you how to do what you need to do to get what you want to get. This interview is brought to you by O'Neill Interactive. O'Neill Interactive designs and develops high performance, award-winning websites for home builders all across the United States. More leads, more sales, and smart, friendly support. O'NeillInteractive.com. everybody, Quint Lears at the International Builder Show 2019 in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm here with the legend Mike Moore. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Quint. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all you do. Well, no, it's been an awesome show and uh, you know, we were always trying to connect and it, 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 these shows get so busy, but I finally, I, I chased him down. I said, Lude, I'm, I'm tagging you out here. We're going to get you on. You were, he was the kickoff speaker uh, at the IBS talking about leadership. Um, that was a big event. Talk to me about it. Yes, it was the opening uh, spotlight session. We talked about coaching and leadership and coaches and what that really takes to apply to business. So we started talking about how you set standards, raise standards, and how you hold people accountable. Okay, coaching versus leadership. Let's talk about the difference. Ah, well, for me, I grew up, I'm a coach's son. So I learned a long time ago that I wasn't raised normal. I, all I saw was coaching. In our industry, we talk about if, you know, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. For a coach, everything looks like an opportunity to improve. So what we talked a lot about in the opening session was how can you develop leaders that are obsessed with improvement so that they're working towards excellence all the time. And it takes that obsession with improvement. So now how do we embrace change? And we're not in an industry that really embraces change. We tend to, and as humans we don't, we dig our feet in and we focus on trying to stay comfortable and get used to what we do. So we worked yesterday in the opening session on how do you actually develop a culture of change and embracing change so that you stop holding back and start leaning in to new ideas, new things, new ways to do things to create improvement to make sure improvement's the focus. Okay, so one question though. You know, we've, well, we focus on gratitude, right? And being satisfied, but then we have to improve. So wh where's the balance? So how do you stay happy, but then always want to improve? Ah. Living, working, playing with joy is about improvement. One of the recent studies for neuroscience was the only thing that really generates happiness in humans is personal progress. Personal progress comes from change. So, yes, you need to be grateful all the time. I said yesterday, leaders are always grateful, but they're never satisfied. Those two aren't the same. You're always looking for, how do I get better? Talked about uh, the coming out of the Super Bowl again with, with Bill Belichick. Bill, one of big, his big issues is if you're happy with what you did yesterday, you're going to fall short the next time. Nick Saban says the same thing in different words. So are you constantly working towards improvement? The real focus, and you and I have talked about this before, but are you learning, growing, and improving every day? If you're doing that, you'll generate joy and happiness and gratitude even for the struggles because they teach you something and help you grow. Well, one thing I love about you is you're always positive, enthusiastic. How do you stay up? I mean, because look, we're grinding out here. You're busy, but I've never seen you not have a smile on your face. So how do you, how do, you do that? And it's real. It, well, and here's mine. It's not about being positive. It's about being mentally tough. I wake up every morning with an attitude to bring me the problems because my personal value grows the more problems I can solve. Most people wake up every morning hoping for a good day, defining a good day, 
as one where they get everything they want done, done, check off their checklist. And that doesn't happen very often. And in this industry, we're in construction. We manage chaos, confusion, unrealistic expectations, unrealistic time frames. It's not easy. So instead of looking for easy, you're constantly waking up and looking every day for what's the challenge. And I'm not one even from a positive standpoint that thinks, you know, oh, we want to look at problems as challenges. No, they're problems. How do I solve those problems? So you develop the mental toughness to grow through the challenges, the problems, the headaches. So that's mine, it's about mental toughness. And we talked about that yesterday too, about leaders who coach are the ones who teach mental toughness. Do you wake up every day looking for challenges? Okay, so what's one tip, but that is that is one tip about how to develop, but it, I mean, instead of just looking for challenges, what if somebody is, is overcome by challenges? I mean, how do you develop that mental toughness? It starts with a core belief that easy never produced excellent. I haven't met one person, 27 years I've been speaking full time, haven't met one person in that time or the 25 years before that with my own employees who woke up and said all I want to be is average. I haven't met one, not one. Yet most of us, our human nature to be comfortable makes us look for the easy way. So if you can actually connect the dots and renew your mind that easy in the history of mankind, there isn't a story where easy produced excellence. So if you don't want to be average, you want to be excellent, you have to accept easy won't do that. Everything of value comes from doing what you don't want to do. So can you wake up and do what you don't want to do? I know you, you get focused. You have, you have ways to get focused, and your audience knows that. They've heard from you. Those ways to get focused renews your mind, get you refocused on doing the right thing instead of the easy thing. I think what he's talking about is like uh, I juggle, and that's one of the ways that I kind of relax and lower the stress, um, connecting the right side of the brain with the left side of the brain. So you've got some big things coming up. You, uh, one, I just, I'm just curious. You're here at the show. You've got all these people, friends, trying to connect with you. You've got your speaking engagements. You're trying to grow your business. How do you prioritize? How do you not just freak out and go, I got to do everything, and then nothing happens? Well, for me, it's a constant reminder, prayer and meditation both focused on what's my mission? What am I supposed to do? I say no about half the time to about half the work that, that is out there that comes my way and say yes to the half that I believe I can make a real difference. So I'm constantly trying to connect with other leaders and businesses and making clients and customers out of people who really want to do the right thing. We're just talking with a new president from one of the home builders and he just told his company, the one thing we're not gonna have is selfishness. If we have one thing that's run rampant for the last 50 years in this country, we've turned selfishness loose. Talked about it yesterday, we, we're, you're a little young, but we remember the Gordon Gecko speech in Wall Street, greed is good. No, it's not, never has been. Latest study shows that the highest paid people in America are the most unselfish. So can we actually overcome our human nature renew our mind, relax, refocus, connect the right brain, left brain, like you were talking. We're finding out now that, that there are neural pathways that we've never known before because we've got technology to watch that. So we can communicate with ourselves and renew our mind and have a different perspective every day. It's where that mental toughness comes from. It's where the positive comes from. Because you don't need to be positive when it's easy. You need to be positive when it's a challenge. When you feel overwhelmed, can I then be thankful and grateful and, and appreciative of the opportunity to even fail? And I'm a big believer that failure doesn't exist. That's, that's an excuse we tell ourselves. And it leads to fear that makes us stop. There's no failure. There's results you want to get, results you don't want to get. The results you don't want to get should teach you how to do what you need to do to get what you want to get. Beautiful. Dude, that, we love doing quotes. We got a handful right there, so we're going to be cycling them through. Now, listen, you, how long have you been a trainer, coach, speaker? Well, I, I, at nine years old, I have conscious memory. That was when my dad started teaching me about coaching and leadership. And it was a Friday night in a locker room. And he started teaching me about feeling and listening and whether the players were ready to play. I decided to go into business years later instead of coaching, took that and all of what I had learned from great coaches that he exposed me to, 
John Wooden became a personal mentor, learned from John, but I applied it to business, which is different than sports. Sports have got some easy things to motivate. There's a bench you can set somebody on. We can't do that in, in business. So for me, 27 years ago, I started speaking full time, but I was in retail and management and then the floor covering, design business, home, new home sales business. So, so but my, my question was, that we're, what I'm trying to get to is that you've had decades of successful building a platform. Yes. Uh, you've got a following, you're an influencer, um, you're a writer, congratulations on your new book. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are, that are uh, aspiring trainers, aspiring coaches, aspiring authors. Yep. Knowing what you know now, what, would you, what advice would you have for yourself 20 years ago? First is make sure that what you're trying to do is help people. That you're not trying, your motive, your intention, like we've talked about sales-wise, your motive and intention has to be to help people, to help people improve. That learn, grow, and improve, your attitude, skills, and actions, to be a likable, trustworthy expert who's helpful, caring, and courageous, that's what you should be doing every day. The results will take care of themselves. It's, I've got an equation, Moore's Law of Achievement, that I developed out of all this, that's attitudes plus skills plus actions equal results. In fact, you and I, I'm excited about that, we're going to be speaking together at the Best Home Builder Practices Summit, and we're going to be talking about this sales trinity on the sales side for sales and sales coaching. How do you manage your attitude, skills, and actions so they produce the results you want and let go of the results. Stop looking at the scoreboard, stop watching the score, and focus on the equation that will produce the score. If one plus one plus one equals three, those three ones, attitude, skills, and actions, you got to change those to change the three. So I'm glad you brought that up. I was I, That's where I met you last year at the Best Home Building Practices Summit, and you were busy. We wanted to get you on the program. I'm super excited. It's going to be awesome this show this year. Bob Winton, uh, Bob Schultz, they put it on an amazing program. Some of the best, spe some of the speakers, trainers. I mean, all different sectors. Uh, tell me about the conference and what it's meant to you over the years, because you're you've been doing it for a while now, yeah. and your relationship with uh, Bob. And, and met Bob, both the Bobs through NHB, through the, the International Builders Show. So again, those connections and networking, and and I'll circle back to what you really asked me to on that first one. That's probably the thing I would tell my younger self is network more because it is that issue of the more people you can get to know, the more people you learn from and the more people you can help. But so Bob and Bob, Bob Witten and Bob Schultz with the, their summit, they've focused on really trying to help home builders separate themselves, manage that chaos and confusion and unrealistic time frame that we deal with and how to make people or give people the ability to be excellent. That's when we met it. You know, how do you help people do what they want to do? And that's what I see their summit every year. It's people coming together to share ideas and thoughts, to try to come away from it and be better than they were when they got there. So you know what what what's what I like about the conference, I'm gonna give a shout out to the conference and yes. Bob. I mean this, this show is amazing, but it's just so busy that it's, it's sometimes you can't connect. Sure. It, what I, we had sit-down dinners, one-on-one, -on -one, coffee after the thing, I mean, with some of the legends. So Best Home Building Practices Summit or besthomebuildingpractices.com. Um, you want to connect with that. I'm excited. Dude, I'm really proud to know you, uh, to, to be there again, and yes. I'm looking forward to sharing some time with you at the summit. You bet. And listen, any like last shout-outs, any, any mentors, any, anybody that you want to uh, talk about or any last words? No, it, it's, you know, I... Quint doesn't want me to say it, but the future of home building lies in our young leaders like Quint. And I know he doesn't really want me to go there, but it's true. And so for me, the shout out is to the young generation in the home building industry. We've got the best kept secret for careers in America. I didn't say jobs, I said careers. And so my faith for even our future and, and even the, on the leadership side, to help the country be a better country is that business wakes up and continues to help people grow and improve. And that falls on shoulders like yours, the next generation. Hey, I, I do appreciate you saying that. And it means a lot, uh, especially coming from you and the encouragement. Listen, keep making an impact. I know you've got a big show. You've got other events coming up. So thanks for the time today. Jump back on the fire hose and ride the, ride the way. Make it a great here at the 2019 International Builder Show.